This is the iPod Nano 6th generation. It was technically an iPod, but a lot of people used it for something a little bit different. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're taking a look at the 2010 Apple Watch. Yeah, that's right. Apple made an Apple Watch before the Apple Watch, kind of. <laughs> Before we get into this, are you a fan of tech? Do you like talking tech? Do you like maybe posting really bad memes? Then the 91 Tech Discord is for you. Link in the description. Uh, the Discord is pretty much brand new. We started it like last week. We've already got a great community over there. It's uh, lots of fun to hang out. I'm on there usually. Let's talk some tech and have some fun. Link in the description to the Discord. But anyways, uh, yeah, 2010 Apple Watch. This is actually a video I've done before, many, many moons ago. Back then, I actually used this iPod as a watch every single day. And you know what? It worked. It can tell time. And when Apple saw people were using this as a watch, they actually added more watch faces to make the experience better. Not that it's perfect at all, like whatsoever, but it was really cool and unique back in 2010, and I would say it still is today. Here's the 6th generation iPod Nano right beside my 44mm Apple Watch Series 5. While obviously the Series 5 looks a lot more modern, you might be surprised to see the form factor actually isn't very different. In fact, it's quite a bit thinner while fitting an entire 30-pin charging port, a headphone jack, and a clip on the back. On the top of the Nano, we have the power and volume buttons, which is pretty straightforward. The form factor is basically the same as the old iPod shuffles, if you remember those, except this one features a touchscreen, making it much more convenient. My favorite thing about this Apple Watch, if you want to call it an Apple Watch, you can twist the screen. That's it. All I want to show, I think this is super cool, but uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the software later. Let's go over that display. It's 1.54 inches and has a resolution of 240 by 240 and pixel density of 220 pixels pixels per inch. That, by modern standards, isn't great, and you can see pixels. Does that matter? Not really. I mean, the screen is so small, I don't think anyone would care if it's not super crisp. Plus, you're not using it to watch a video or anything, you're using it to select your song most of the time, so I don't think it's a big deal whatsoever. The 6th gen iPod Nano came out in the September of 2010, and would be sold for two years until the 7th generation came out. My opinion, the 7th gen wasn't that good. Sure, it looks a little bit sleeker, but it lost the ultra-compact form factor of the 6th gen, and most importantly, couldn't be used as a watch, at least not practically. Reviews at the time when the iPod Nano came out were mainly positive. It was a huge change as it went from the classic traditional iPod form factor to this tiny little square with a screen and removed the click wheel, which some people weren't ready to move on from. The iPod was praised for its sharp display, which at the time, keep in mind, only the iPhone 4 had a retina display, so this was pretty legit, and it was also praised for its easy to use software. There were complaints about a few things, uh, no camera, which uh, the previous iPod Nano had had, and no video playback. These complaints seem silly nowadays, and I think that's because they are, but to be fair, technically this was a removed feature, as the iPod Nano 5th generation could do it. The watch phenomenon with the iPod Nano 6 hit actually pretty quickly, as people caught on to the fact that the device kind of looks like a watch. Plus, Apple had a built-in clock you could use, which means all you needed was an aftermarket wristband. There was a setting that would open the clock first whenever you woke the device, which you could do with a quick press to the power button. Even Steve Jobs at the time joked that an Apple board member was going to use it as a watch, it all just kind of made sense. How it works for most of these straps is simple enough, you just clip the iPod in using its, uh, well, clip. The iPod Nano is fully aluminum, making it pretty durable feeling, and while the screen scratches probably too easily, a lot of people were willing to take that risk to use the original Apple Watch, or iWatch as most people would have called it at the time. There are a ton of different color options, which is pretty cool. You've got silver, graphite, blue, green, orange, pink, and a special edition red model. There is something here for everyone. Here's the biggest problem with the the uh, 2010 Apple Watch. It's really inconvenient. The whole point of a watch is that you can just look down and glance at it anytime to see the time, but you can't with this. You have to hit the power button, and then there's like a short delay before the screen comes on, and then you can see the time. The first Apple Watch from 2015 solved this problem with gestures, essentially. When you turn the Apple Watch up towards you, it'll turn on and you can see the time. It's a mostly good system. There were times where it annoyed me because I wanted to see the time without lifting my wrist, and luckily we've got that now with the Apple Watch Series 5, a device launched nine years after the iPod Nano 6. It has an always-on display and is honestly awesome, although definitely a bit of a 
battery drain. Anyways, the point I'm getting to here is that this iPod had none of that. To turn it on, you had to hit the power button every single time. You couldn't just lift your wrist, you had to physically reach over and click the button. After you did, there's again that small delay before the screen actually comes on, and then you can see the time. To say this was convenient would be a lie, but I guess you didn't really use the iPod as a watch for convenience sake. You did it because it was cool and unique, and hey, you would get used to it. I would instinctively press the button before I even looked at the watch, so by the time I did, I could see the clock. I used this uh, blue iPod Nano for, I want to say about a year, um, around 2014-ish before the Apple Watch came out. Like, I remember when it came out and still having this. And then I uh, accidentally washed it in the laundry and now it's dead. I wanted another one. And while at this point the Apple Watch was out, uh, I didn't have money for that kind of thing. Are you kidding me? So instead I got uh, this, another iPod Nano. I actually used this all the way through my grade 12 year in high school until I got the Apple Watch Series 3 after I graduated. And then the Series 5 this year when it came out. For most of high school, I used this as a watch. And honestly, I really liked it. Before the Apple Watch came out and even after, people were always asking, me what this was. Was that the new iWatch? That kind of thing. Uh, it was always kind of fun. Plus, it was functional and actually could do more than just tell the time. Believe it or not, this is an iPod and actually holds music. There are two storage options, 8 or 16 gigabytes. Pretty straightforward and it's pretty safe to say that this will hold a lot of music, which back in the day you would have uh, gotten off of iTunes. The worst way this is aged is that you don't really download music anymore, at least not a whole lot. Instead, you would stream it, or at least I stream it, and I would say most people stream it nowadays, which you cannot do with this iPod. But if you still have a massive backlog of purchased songs on iTunes, you can still sync them all to the iPod. Actually, you technically can kind of stream with this iPod. When you have headphones plugged in, you can actually listen to local radio stations. So if you need a very tiny radio, the iPod Nano 6 has you covered. I will say if you use the iPod on your wrist, it isn't super convenient for listening to music or the radio or anything. You kind of have to run your headphone cord up your sleeve and it's a bit awkward and definitely looks a little funny. Still though, it does work. Oh, also if it wasn't apparent already, uh, this iPod has no speakers, which means you'll need to use the headphone jack like a caveman. There are some nice fitness features with this iPod. Uh, there's a pedometer, which is supposed to track your steps, although never really uh, seemed to do it very accurately for me back in the day, but maybe that's because it was on my wrist. There's also a Nike Plus app that is supposed to be able to track walking and running. Probably not that accurate, but it's cool that it's here and adds some neat functionality. Of course, all this has come a long way and Apple Watch watches right now are amazing fitness trackers. Pretty cool that they were doing kind of the same thing almost a decade ago. The software itself is pretty easy to navigate. You swipe around, tap an icon, and to get back you can swipe in from the left side. You can also change up the UI if you'd like. Originally you had four icons on the screen at once, but after the 2011 update you can have just one big icon per page. This is probably more helpful for people with giant fingers. I don't know, I've always preferred the smaller icons, but it is cool to have some choice. Once you go into the clock app you can change your watch face by tapping on the screen and flipping through the 18 options. There's some decent variety here, and it even has Disney watch faces for whatever reason. You also have a few wallpaper options, which is kind of cool. I actually just really love the software in general. It feels like iOS 4 Lite almost. I say iOS 4 because that's what was out when this iPod came out. I like the software on this iPod a lot, and when I first saw it, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. There might not be video playback, but you can put photos on here. I actually used to put a photo of the Apple Watch home screen on here so it looked like I had an Apple Watch. It was really dumb but it did fool people if I tried to. Probably wouldn't anymore as Apple Watches are pretty common now, but back in the day it did. One of the best things about the basic software is that battery life is really good. I remember getting like a week out of the battery, sometimes more, maybe a little less. That's if I wasn't listening to music, and that's compared to about uh, two days on the Apple Watch. And I do use the always-on display and that doesn't help, but still, I uh, do miss the very good battery life this thing had. The iPod Nano 6 generation was pretty bare bones and served as an in-between device from an iPod shuffle to an iPod Touch. These things were so cool back in the day, and I would be shocked if it wasn't one of the initial reasons Apple started developing their own watch. Immediately, third-party watch bands started coming out for this iPod. Smartwatches weren't really a thing in the early 2010s, and so this iPod Nano was really as good as it got. Using it as a watch wasn't that convenient, especially compared to a real watch, but the novelty was there, and that's really what mattered. I have no complaints about getting it when I did, even if it was a little bit expensive, and the price is something that has dropped over the years. Turning to ebay.com, we can see this iPod is still going for anywhere from $40 to $100. You can even occasionally find one brand new, although these are usually very expensive. $40-ish dollars for this is actually not a terrible deal, and while I would not recommend buying it for any reason, 
reason. For a small iPod that you can slap to your wrist, 40 bucks is pretty fair. You can still find watch bands for these too. If you look on eBay, Amazon, they're still out there. The battery on a lot of these uh, old iPod Nanos might be toast. Mine isn't, but some might be, so that's something to watch out for. But overall, there is some practical use these things could have, although not really much beyond being a music player that you can put on your wrist. Using it as a watch, I mean, come on, I'd recommend just buying a used Apple Watch if you really want to do that, or even the Apple Watch Series 3 is a pretty good deal now and often has sales. Still though, there is something really special about the 2010 Apple Watch. I doubt Apple originally intended for people to use it as a watch, but I love that they leaned into it by adding more watch faces the next year. It's a rare sign of Apple listening to consumers consumers, and those are always nice to see. The iPod Nano 6 generation is one of the most unique devices Apple's ever made, and while we'll probably never see another iPod Nano of any kind, with the 7th gen being discontinued without plans of ever making a new one, I think this iPod will stand the test of time and be remembered for years for simply how awesome it was. This is frankly one of my favorite Apple products ever, and uh, trust me when I say I've used a lot of different Apple products. But with that, I think I'm going to end things here. Did you ever use the 2010? an Apple Watch as a watch? Did you ever even own one in general? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video interesting, maybe hit that like button and uh, consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for whatever reason. And also Discord is a thing now, so link in the description. Make sure you go uh, join us over there. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.